Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Kim Mara Show. I am your host, Kim Mara, and on today's episode, I am joined by the legendary marketer, Mr. John Dwyer. So if you've ever heard of direct response marketing and you wanted to find out a bit more about what that is or incentive-based marketing, this is the episode you were not going to want to miss. Uh, really, really, really great chat. A little bit longer than usual, but uh, that's to be expected when you put two marketers in a room together. So, uh, and of course, are we going to help you with our market, your marketing by us? Our marketing together, head over to our free Facebook community, www.joinmygroup.com.au. But until then, let's jump into the show. JD, thank you so much for joining us today. Really appreciate you making the time. Uh, my pleasure, uh, Kim. And of course, uh, thank you for thanking me because I'm so important. <laughs> you are, you are. It is It is great to have you here. And uh, I always like to start the podcast off the same way every time, which is if I met you at a party and we were having a chat and maybe having a cheeky beer, and I said to you, JD, what is it that you actually do? What's your go-to answer? Gee, that's a good question. That's a great question. Yeah, uh, I'd probably say that I, uh, over the years, uh, my income has been derived from showing business owners, particularly small business owners who don't have a marketing department, showing business owners how they can actually stand up from the crowd with what we call direct response marketing. And uh, I would probably say to you, look, we're not a traditional marketing or advertising agency because the traditional ones tend to focus on brand building and so therefore they'll tell you to get your name out there and of course there's nothing wrong with that you should be doing that but for a lot of smaller businesses who might be doing less than a couple of million turnover uh, it's very difficult to sponsor the AFL football team or to sponsor the Olympics and put your logo on the side of the bus and wait for people to ring uh, when you're a smaller business yes still build your brand as best you can but direct response marketing is all about advertising on Facebook today and hopefully getting a return tomorrow. And uh, I'm just out of my own personal curiosity, I always like to know, what was your first kind of foray into direct response? Like, what was it that grabbed your attention or did you hear something from someone? Like, because a lot of people in marketing or even advertising, sometimes direct response is either very well known or not known at all. Yeah, good point. Um, probably if you said to me, what was my first foray into this? Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I got a job at Roselands Shopping Centre in Sydney. That won't mean uh, anything to you over in Perth, but uh, it was the big shopping centre in Sydney at the time before all the Westfields came along. So it was like a Westfield. And uh, I was the promotion manager of the you know tender age of 21 or 22. I had no clue what I was doing. They were mad to even give me the job. And uh, I put on stage one time a fake wedding of one of the big TV shows. Uh, it was not Neighbours, but it was a show like Neighbours back in those times. We're talking back in the 1900s, by the way. Uh, and so it was a show called The Restless Years, I think it was called. And uh, so anyway, we basically mirrored the wedding of the year that was on that TV show. We recreated that on stage at the shopping centre. And this idiot who you're talking to um, had 15,000 schoolgirls turn up. Uh, <laughs> All the shops had to close their doors, which was marvellous, wasn't it? What a great marketer I was. <laughs> and uh, I was showing off to the boss, well, look at this, eh? look what I've done. He went, you idiot, you've packed the shopping centre and you think that's a good thing, and normally it would be, but with people with money. These kids, are, they're spending money on bubble gum and all the stores had to close. Now, the good and bad that came out of that was, of course, bad. I was a complete moron because I was filling the shopping centre with kids with no money. But the good that came out of it, I thought, hang on, this direct response thing, because we just advertised on radio and the local newspaper like the day before, this direct response thing, if I brought the right crowd in, imagine how much money the shops would make and they'd have to build a statue of me outside the shopping centre. Um, and then it went from there. So I realised that there's a way to get instant, instant response rather than just relying on building your brand. As I said at the intro, I mean, a lot of small businesses just don't have the money to you know, just do brand building. Uh, they're all about you know putting food on the table next week. 100%. And I think that's the most important thing that uh, I see because I know so many businesses when I speak to them and they're weighing up direct response, digital advertising, and they're like, oh, but I've been speaking to the local radio station and things like that or you know the local TV station and they want to offer me this and it's five, 6,000 plus for this. I was like, that's all well and good, but you know, what, like, how do we know who's going to be hearing it? Because like you said there, the audience that you have 
is one of the most important things. And then secondary to that is going to be the offer. And what happens if they stuff up or they say, I remember someone, uh, I was seeing a, a review of the radio ad and they gave the wrong website. Oh, <laughs> there was like one, one letter incorrect. And I was like, whoever, you know, that, that domain was going nowhere, but they paid for it and they put it out there and they didn't pick it up in the, uh, in the back end. So you know, they spent all like $5,000 and it was gone. You can't save yourself on radio with a QR code, can you? Yeah, it was a clean bit. Yeah, Kim, you get it too because you're in the same game as I am. But, you know, it's amazing how, uh, I mean, I used to work for some of the big radio stations again back in the day and uh, they would hold uh, seminars for small businesses uh, and they would sell what they called a brand works package. And maybe you're familiar with it. I think they still do it. And what it is is that they, they look for unsuspecting smaller business owners who don't understand radio they will tell you that their cumulative, cumulative audience in, uh, in you know, Brisbane, for example, is 652,000. So, of course, if you're not in the game that you and I are in, the cumulative audience is all of the half hours for that whole week added up. Uh, their breakfast audience for that particular one that I'm quoting was 19,000. So they had 19,000 people listening at breakfast. But, of course, the, you know, the trick, if you like, that the radio station plays when they've got all these business owners at a seminar, oh, I've got 650,000 you know, at listeners, cumulative, which means all the hours added up throughout the week. And they, they sell these brand work packages. And the reason the radio station sells brand works, and that is building a brand with all of these ads that normally come on midnight to dawn, by the way, with that package. But anyway, <laughs> that's why I say they target unsuspecting small business owners. Um, guess what? They realize that if they just promote the brand, then that business owner will never know whether it worked or not. And the chances of them just continuing are, are pretty high. You know, uh, whereas in your instance and mine, if we provide a business with a direct response marketing campaign and it doesn't put a lot of food on the table next week, then we're responsible. And I think that's the way it should be, right? It's like that the work that you do must, uh, must have some sort of return because otherwise it's, uh, it's impossible. Well, you know, you and I, and I keep on saying you and I, but I know your background too, Kim, so therefore you're probably seeing it from the same hymn book in terms of direct response. The, the, our mantra is, if it's not measurable, then don't do it. I mean, it's fine if you're McDonald's, you can sponsor the Olympics and not sell another hamburger, and you you know, can justify that by saying, oh, we're building a brand. But if you're doing less than $2 million or less than $1 million in turnover, then you want to make sure that if you put a dollar into that poker machine, you're going to get $2, $2 or $3 out. So if it ain't measurable for a small business, don't do it. It's not worth the risk. 100%. And uh, you mentioned, obviously, the the first learning that you had was, you know, the, the right audience coming through uh, is, is so important. Secondary to that, the one that I always look at, and um, I know you do as well, is the is the offer. For small businesses, how important is it, number one, to get that right? And what have you seen over the years work and not work? Yeah, mate, uh, never, ever, 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 ever uh, make an offer for your product or service without a deadline. And I see it all the time. I see it all the time whereby, you know, just have a look at what Harvey Norman does. I mean, they, they get it right. They've got three years interest free and it's only for this weekend. And then next Friday will be only for that weekend. <laughs> or to bump up to five years interest free. And as excruciatingly frustrating when you hear that damn ad all the time, all the time, all the time, they realize that the audience this weekend who are looking for a refrigerator is quite different from the audience next weekend. It's like when you buy a red car, you've never seen so many red cars in your life. Everyone's got the damn red car. Well, the thing is, is that, you know, Harvey Norman realizes if you do not put a deadline against something, uh, we to give an example. Um, Gail, my wife, had a guy come in recently to just quote on cleaning the tiles on our roof. And he came in, whatever it was, two or three grand, whatever it was. And uh, he just scratched out a quote on a bit of paper. It looked like it was done by Yeti, you know. Uh, so anyway, as he took a drag on his Peter Jackson 50 cigarette, and he, uh, he said, well, I used to quote. And uh, I said, mate, um, can we just give you a tip? Um, we're going to obviously sit on this and no urgency factor because you haven't given us any urgency factor. And he goes, um, what were you talking about? And because I told him the game I'm in, which means that I'm a know all. And uh, so I said to him, mate, if you put a thing on this, normally 3,000, and but you know, if you, we get in by Friday, it's 2,480 or something like that. Is every, it probably wouldn't affect me because I make this stuff up, right? But for most people, they go, oh, we've got to get in by Friday. And uh, his conversion rate, I mean, even in our own business with the stuff that we do, we make sure that we practice what we preach. And it can be as stunning as doubling your conversion rate. I mean, if you just say, you know, this is the deadline, you know, we won't extend that deadline. You've got to be very strict about it. You've got to stick with it. Um, do you just look what happens to your business? You'll probably double your conversion rate. Yeah, I think it makes a, such a... Uh a big 
big, big, big difference. And I remember like, so uh, my very first uh, thing that I sold online was um, ad like advertising for a forum. I had like a banner ad and there was 10 spots that we had. And I literally put up an uh, offer and I sent it out. I was like 15 at the time. I had no idea that I was using uh, scarcity or urgency or anything like that. And I was like, look, there's 50 people that are getting this email. There's five spots available. It's this. And after tomorrow, I will have to change it because I'm likely people are going to come in. So I'm, I'm going to have to adjust what the offer is. And it's going to go up by a thousand dollars or something like that. Not knowing that that was what I was using or anything like that, because that was legitimately what the people told me. They said, tomorrow we have to put it up. This is what it's going to be. So I was like, oh, send that out. And we had so many people uh, sign up from that perspective. And that always stuck with me. And as long as you, as you said, you have to make sure that you, you know, keep it legitimate and not be like, oh, if someone messaged you an hour later and after the cutoff time and be like, oh, we'll just squeeze you in. You've got to, you've got to hop to it as well. No, you've got to stick with it. And the other thing too, I'm sure you sing from the same inbook, Kim, and that is a uh, reason why advertising, if you're going to put a deadline against something and it's some special, you know, really sexy deal, then you have to have a reason why. And the reason why, I mean, most of the, the real reason why is you want cash flow, but it could be that it's June 30 or your warehouse is full, you've got a clear stock or, you know, it's a use by date coming up. So therefore you've got to get rid of it before the new stock comes, whatever it may be, but it's called reason why. So People sometimes are very skeptical of something that's crazy, uh, and they'll be less skeptical if you say, "Look, the reason why we're doing this." And the other thing, Jim, that just freaks me out. I just—it's amazing. I, I'd say probably ninety percent of businesses don't use this, particularly on their website, and that is problem solution. Um, it's just crazy, crazy, crazy. I had a guy yesterday who runs a multi-multi-million-dollar guttering business, so he's got this special design that he's trademarked all around the world. And it's a special garter nut that people have on their house that apparently the water goes down the pipes a lot easier. The leaves don't fall into your guttering and it's got all these bells and whistles. And he had a website company put it together, which of course, um, the worst person to go to. If I said to you, who would you go to if you got a sore tooth, you go to a dentist, uh, who would you go to if you got a sore back, a physiotherapist, who would you go to if you you know want a website, I'm a website designer. And I go, no, because a website designer is normally run by a bearded hipster uh, who's still using proactive. And they will give you a headline and a design that might look pretty, but whether it sells anything is another thing. Uh, easy when you're old to bag out millennials, isn't it? Uh, so <laughs> I always say to them, you have to have a problem solution heading. This guttering guy, he showed me the website that had been put together by um, some 21 year olds. And the heading was um, ABC guttering service. We are here for you. You could hear crickets in the background. And I said to him, do you think? Maybe a headline of a problem solution might have been better. And that is, and of course, anyone who comes to your website, obviously, have come because they're interested in your guttering. And the headline would be, are you sick and tired of leaves filling up your guttering? And when it rains, water pouring over the guttering, blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? Here's an exciting breakthrough. Because this guy has designed something that is a breakthrough. And he got it. He went, oh, God, why did I give all that money to a 22-year-old? It is true. And it's like, that is the most valuable real estate that you have on uh, online, and it's like having a um, having a shop front. I always say to people, "Is like if that's like your shop front, and you put a sign that just says come in, there's <laughs> like there's you know maybe one or two people will, but it's like you've got to you know you've got to showcase your wares and showcase how you help people and and solve their problems. Otherwise, it's a, it's a big waste. And you know what the, the thing is that freaks me out, Kim, is the lack of. I, I mean, you got me on a roll, but the lack of people who collect databases. It's just a male collect data, I should say. Um, I was speaking at a restaurant convention just before COVID and I said to them, look, I'm going to give you an idea. There's your restaurant doors and cafe owners. I'll give you an idea right now that will double your business, if not triple your business. But I guarantee if I come back next year and speak, not one of you ever use it. And then we write, I said, okay, I've got a client in Melbourne called the Lobster Cave and it's a very upmarket restaurant. So if your entrees are $40, the main meals are 60 and 70 and normally he's got Mercedes and BMWs outside his restaurant. He was spending half a million dollars on TV and radio and newspapers in Melbourne, a uh, very upmarket suburb at Bo Morris. I said, look, how about we save all of that and we just give your waitresses 50 cents for every name, phone number and email they collect. He said, how are we going to do that? I said, well, basically you just have a little bit of paper the size of an ace of diamonds, okay, or well, the size of your iPhone. Uh, do not use an app because over 40s you're going to go, look, I won't enter that. And it just says, when dinner for 10 of your friends at the end of the month, they write in their name. And when you have the check to the table, you hand out four or five or six of these to everyone around the table. 92% of people fill them out with their name, their email and their phone number. We're out interested in their phone number. And this is how it works. I visited him about six months later. Uh, his business went from 
let's say two ish, two point something to about four point something in the first year, did nothing else. He stopped all his advertising and did this. And I'm not telling you any secrets. He allowed me to, to give those figures. He's given them to me in, in a testimonial himself. Uh, basically, what happened is that every time someone ate there, the waitress would come up and say, Look, would you like to win dinner for 10 of your friends? And she puts out, you know, three or four or five of these entry forms. Um, he's up to over 80,000 on a database now. And all he does every afternoon at three o'clock, he calls his long suffering secretary because he's cheeky like me. So the poor thing's been had to put up with him forever. Imagine putting up with me for all those years. And he says, uh, tell, and I was there. He said, Tell JD how many seats in our 180 seat restaurant are booked tonight. She looks up a tablet. She says, oh, 73. He goes, well, we've got to fill another 110 seats. Send out JD's BS uh, text message, uh, number four, because I gave him 10 text messages to send out, and he just rotates them. And number four might have been, look, Chef Pierre from the Lobster Gay would like to invite you and your wife uh, tonight um, to come for our special deal. It's a lobster tail meal for deal for two for no, $68. No one leaves less than $200 a couple, because a bottle of water is 25 bucks, right? Uh, so guess what? She walks in 10 minutes later after she'd sent out just 500 of those because you don't annoy people every day because you've got such a large database now. They won't get the same text for another month, right? She walks in 10 minutes later, every single seat full because uh, we said you better get in it'll be gone in 10 minutes, right? And uh, so therefore, he's the only restaurant in the entire world that's full 364 nights a year because he collects data and uses it every afternoon with text messaging. No one does it. No one. It's so true. Like a, a ex partner of mine had a had a cafe, and that was the biggest thing. I would go into places all the time, and I'm just sitting there. I'm like, no one's catching anything. And same, I would go down to um, uh, Margaret River, the wine region here in WA, and you go in and you do this tasting, and they give you a free tasting. Or well, before COVID, now you've got to pay um, you know, ten bucks to do the tasting. But I go in there, I spend money. No one collects any of my data apart from maybe a few places trying to sign you up to their club and you have to fill in a big long form and i was like just get in my email my phone number while i'm here and be like hey before you go home yeah up a special like you know a six pack of this for this like absolutely nothing it just blows my mind well yeah i think gail my wife is going to leave me after 30 something years of marriage because she's sick of me going on about it like because i'm just a i'm a nana about that we'll go to a restaurant and I, we went to one last week and it was our anniversary or something you'd think i'd know wouldn't i but anyway we went and um it was a really nice restaurant on the Gold Coast, which is where we are, and it might have been two hundred and fifty dollars. We went nuts, you know. We had the three to the dessert and the fancy water, and uh, the girl comes up and starts a conversation. And uh, she was the assistant manager, she told us, and she said, oh, "Okay, what do you guys do for a living?" And then Gail rolls her eyes because she knows this poor girl's going to cop it. And I went, "Ah, oh, let me tell you." So I went through the whole one that you collect data. Her eyes were the size of saucepans. She said, "Oh my God, of course, of course. How simple is that?" Guess what? She shook her hands and. Never asked for our names. <laughs> and I said, I said to Gail, why do I bother? Why? Because it's not like I'm trying to even sell anything. I'm just giving them free information that I reckon would double or triple their sales because it wasn't full restaurant on a Friday night. It was only half four. And uh, they, they said, show thank you. And then they go back to washing the dishes. It's just amazing. Oh, it's shocking, isn't it? One of the things I really like what you said there, though, about the, uh, the lobster cave is obviously... To get people to do it, though, there was an incentive, as you said, a reason why. There was something there being like, to win a dinner for 10 people. And if you're already there and you know it's an upmarket place and there's something that's going to impress your friends, of course you're going to enter. And in, uh, I know that you know recently you and I caught up about incentive-based marketing, but how big have how big an impact have you found that on yourself, your clients, and, and things like that as well? Yeah, mate, look, we, uh, we used to make most uh, of our income out of consultancy. And of course, you know, as you well know, consultancy can be very frustrating because uh, sometimes you can be, you know, giving people the ab swing, but they put it under the bed. So, you know, I would give marketing plans to a lot of businesses. And uh, because I'm not 25 anymore, those marketing plans were based on history and they were based on proven concepts that had worked previously. So it's not like I was 21, I just made them up and they thought, oh, I'm not going to execute that. These were things that had been proven to work. So it was pretty easy just to join the dots and turn them on. But the percentage of business owners who left, you know, my seminar or left the Zoom call and then, you know, executed was, yeah, small, unfortunately. And so therefore we decided that what small businesses are looking for because they are time for is done for you. We realize it's done for you. So we've come up with a whole bunch of package promotions, petrol discount promotions and win a million dollars and all sorts of things. And the one I think you're referring to is one recently, and we call this incentive-based marketing. In other words, give someone a Happy Meal toy to buy something from you. And this one, as, as you know, Kim, is, um, we 
did a promotion some years ago with a building society in Australia called the Greater Building Society. And I said to them, look, you're not going to beat the big banks because if you are market your home loans for 4.5%, the Commonwealth Bank's going to beat you in a heartbeat. Okay, it's basically like a little hardware store taking on Bunnings. So they said, okay, smart Alec, what should we do? I said, well, don't advertise on price. You know, the last thing that any business wants to do is advertise on price because whoever the Coca-Cola 40-ton gorilla is in your industry, they are beat you. So don't advertise on price. Just beat them with what we call an incentive. And McDonald's have been doing it for 40 years. You know, buy the Happy Meal and you've got, you know, free toy inside. And I've got six kids. They're grown up now. But at one stage, you know, we had six little kids and we gave McDonald's four gazillion dollars and they never ate the hamburger. It was just all about the toy. So we teach people how to create an incentive or a Happy Meal toy. And uh, what happened is that with this building society, I said, look, I'm doing some TV commercials with Kerry Ann Kennelly on Channel 9. She's representing a discount travel company. What about I just, you know, introduce you guys? And that's what happened. The building society stopped advertising on interest rates and basically said, swap your home loan from the big banks to us. We give you a free holiday. Uh, they took an extra $15 billion, not million, $15 billion worth of home loans in the first two years. And this moron who you're talking to did not take a percentage of the increase in that. <laughs> I am such a fool. I don't know why anyone would actually employ my services. But anyway, uh, I got a handsome, you know, sort of consultancy fee over the years. But yeah, I wish I'd taken 0.001% of the increase in home loans. So anyway, as it turned out, many years later, uh, just before COVID, I got a call from an American company who said, listen, we've seen what you did with that holiday thing. Oh, by the way, I got Jerry Seinfeld to do the ads for them too, which uh, which helped, of course. So you get Seinfeld to do your ads, and, you know, you can't keep that a secret. So this American company saw the Seinfeld ads and get a home, they get a holiday. They contacted me and said, listen, we've got access to unsolved hotel rooms at four-star resorts all around the world because the hotels realised that tonight, if they've got an empty room, there's nothing more perishable than that. Yeah, they can't sell it tomorrow. So why not give that up for free and hope that whoever stays there will spend money on the cafe and restaurant and room service. I went, okay, yeah, that sounds good. And they said, look, we're a travel company. We're not marketers. You're a marketer. Why don't we join forces and you come up with a way that this could be a happy meal toy for businesses? So that's what we've done. And uh, we market it now to businesses whereby if they've got a, uh, a refrigerator or their bill plan or whatever it might be, uh, simply say to your you know, audience, buy my refrigerator and you get a free holiday. And these are three to seven night holidays around Australia and Bali and Fiji and Hawaii and America and Europe. It's all around the world. Uh, and they're valued up to about a thousand dollars, and we sell them to businesses for ninety-seven dollars a holiday. Uh, and it's just gone nuts since COVID has gone away. Of course, what is the hottest happy meal toy in the world? You could possibly you know, lure anyone to your product or services. Of course, it's a free holiday. And that's you know we've got one guy in um, Melbourne. He's a little hardware store sitting opposite Bunnings. He's done over two thousand holidays at their office because he says spend five hundred dollars with me instead of Bunnings, and I'll give you a free holiday spend a thousand dollars you get two free holidays and he is just bunnings across the road are having committee meetings trying to work out how to beat him if he went with price they could beat him within like five seconds but because he's got a happy meal toy which is the free holiday they're scratching the heads going how do we beat this this little rat bag i think that's so important like i know that when when you shared it with me it made so much sense because it is otherwise like if you do become a a price chopper it's literally a race to the bottom because everyone else is going to, to trim and trim and trim versus like the the incentive. And um I mean you've had some like you shared with me some really creative ways of of using them for people because obviously hardware stores and whatnot, obviously you can do it on packages on on volume and how much they purchase. But what have you seen work for people in the spaces of like coaching, consulting, those more like digital infopreneur type people? Yeah, it mate, works absolutely like yeah, a dream for them. Um I'm in that space, so I know it very well, uh, and so are you. Uh, so what you would do is that you would, uh, and what happens is that from time to time, we're able to even do a better deal than the $97 per holiday, so I'm just dropping that as a hint. But nonetheless, uh, what the coaches or consultants would do, and this could be even accountants for that matter, anyone who's an advisor, uh, just get someone to book a uh, discovery call with you and reward them for giving up that 20 or 30 minutes by giving them a free holiday. You just give them a voucher. Uh, the vouchers, let me see, and one of Look, something like that. If you were to print them out, it's an A4 voucher. And it's got their own unique code here that they use when they're booking the holiday. And of course, we tease them on the back of that with all the locations. So basically, you'd say, look, come to my webinar and stay to the end. And I will give you a code at the end, which means you go online and just you know, download your free holiday voucher or book a discovery call with me. Because uh, if you're selling a mastermind series or you're selling any sort of coaching program, you know as well as I do that if you've got 50 people 
to talk to, whether it's in a, a, a webinar or a seminar or whether you do 50 one-on-ones, you're going to make more money than if you spoke to 20 people. So I would use them for a lead gen and a conversion tool. So you would say to someone, look, come to my webinar and at the end of it, I'll give you a code and that code uh, gives you a holiday. If you decide to actually invest in my mastermind program or my consultancy program, I'll give you another holiday. Because let's face it, I mean, you know, most of the time, the people who come on board, we do a better deal for them than $97 because we can see it might be a coffee drip. In other words, if it's a business that's going to come back more often, of course, we'd be silly not to do the right thing by that. But even if they pay full tariff at $97, can you imagine if you had 10 meetings to sell a $5,000 mastermind program uh, and uh, you gave out 10 times $97 holidays, right, that are valued up to $1,000, but it only cost you $97, you've just forked out $970 to us. But if you close just one or two or three of those 10, I think you're way, way, way ahead on the ROI scale. Hundred percent. Yeah, we had a um, uh, a client, funny enough, tell me just uh, yesterday he purchased holidays from you guys, uh, Jared. He runs a webinar. He ran a webinar. Unfortunately, his email service provider screwed up his registration page. He had a whole bunch of issues as he was going through. So he got ten people to register for this webinar, where he was going to give away a holiday to um, two lucky uh, attendees. Had uh, eight of ten people show up. And then two of eight people purchased on the back of that. And they all stuck around all the way to the very end because they wanted to find out if they were going to be one of the lucky few people that won a, uh, uh, a, a free holiday. And like in comparison to his normal webinars where he was getting 50 or 100, his conversion rate was the same Yeah, uh, on that. Yeah. Just because they, well, they, they had to stick around to the year. And it's not like they're like, oh, someone's going to sell something now. I'm going to tune off and, and, uh, and remove myself. Because his his offer is really good, and they they stuck around and heard it, and then they were like, "Wow!" So he um you know for for uh well I think he gave away three, including to the two people that purchased. So for two hundred and seventy bucks plus, I think about five hundred bucks in ads, he made about seven grand. Yeah. yeah. Oh, mate, let me tell you this, and this would work for consultants too. We had a pool slide guy come on board, and uh, obviously he wants to talk to people with swimming pools, and these are like fifteen hundred to three thousand dollar pool slides. So we put the campaign together for him on Facebook, and it said, uh, "How would you like to win a pool slide and a holiday?" Right, because he took the holiday program from us. Um, in five weeks, he had sixteen hundred leads. So in other words, sixteen hundred people clicked and went through to the contest page. And of course, he gave away one slide, but he had 1,599 people to ring up and say, look, good news and bad news. The bad news is you didn't win the pill slide on the holiday. The good news is I've got a special deal on the pill slide by Friday. If you get in and get it by Friday, we'll give you a free holiday. Shut the gate all over, you know. And he said to me that um, uh, it was the best 12-month period in 14 years uh, of business. And it's because we created avalanche leads. And so if I was a consultant and you're advertising on social media, whether it's organically or paid, maybe what you'd like to do is say, look, um, and I've tried it myself, it works like a dream. Would you like to win my coaching program? Okay. And obviously you target the audience that you're targeting. And then if you do, then and so, you, know, you basically click here, come through to a page. They enter the page to win the coaching program and a free vacation. Okay. And of course you give one away. And then at the end of that, you've got 99 or 199 others who you can ring up and say, look, you must have been interested in my coaching program, otherwise you wouldn't want to. I mean, who enters a contest for something they don't want to win? And so you know their warmer prospect and say, they'll tell you what, if you join my coaching program, I'll give you the damn holiday. That's, actually, if I can just do a, a, a um, impersonation now, evil, Dr. Evil. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. It's so good. And I know that, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely, yeah, uh, I'm going to be testing out some of these strategies as well. I've just started having a play around with it myself, so... Uh, I'm excited to, we've got a few new campaigns rolling out. So I'm going to be, uh, people keep your eyes peeled for, uh, free holidays when, uh, when <laughs> coming up. Boom. Um, now, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm so stupid that, um, because we've got the worldwide license for this now, and we didn't in the beginning for the first couple of years. So throughout COVID, we had Australia and New Zealand, but when the American company saw how we did still pretty well throughout COVID, which is quite amazing when you couldn't jump in a plane, but we, we, basically um, made all the holidays a drivable location at that time, but now I've jump in a plane again. So it's America, it's like Vegas, New York, London, Switzerland, Bali, Hawaii. Uh, but they gave us a worldwide license about September last year, which means we're marketing this uh, package now in America as well. And I've got to keep on disciplining myself when I'm on a podcast like this to say vacation, the holiday vacation. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, it's, you gotta you gotta uh, meet the audience where they're at, right? It's, yeah, because uh, it's funny because the Americans will say to me, uh, "So holiday? That that's between Christmas and New Year." Oh, I'm, I'm an idiot. Don't have a vacation. Vacation is a vacation. <laughs> Oh uh, gosh, love it, love it. And now, uh, JD, as we get towards the end of our time here together, I'd love to ask as well, is there any questions that I haven't asked you that I should have? Uh, let me see, let me see. Um, you know, one that, you and I do lots of podcasts, and, and uh, I'm not saying that uh, I don't want to be like Tom Cruise when he gets on these tonight shows and tells everybody you've got to love what you do. Well, of course you love what you do when you're getting $10 million just to play and act play. And so that does annoy me a bit. The rest of us, are, uh, you know, it's, terrific if you do you know, something and you make money out of it and you love what you do but for a lot of us you've just got to do stuff to put food on the table you know however having said that um i always just say look uh try and hang around some crazy people um try and hang around people who say why not not people who say why so i guess the question that you know i would suggest you'd ask me is like, you know what sort of uh, i guess advice would you give any younger people who might be running a business whether it's consultancy or otherwise and I would just say, you know, as Jim Rowan said, you know, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Um, you are the average of that, you know, five or six or 10 people you hang around. And I know throughout my time uh, when my revenue might have gone down a bit, guess what? If I look back on that time, I was probably hanging around the wrong people. Uh, I was hanging around people who said, oh, why? You know, why would you do that, JD? Why would you do that? And as soon as I hung around some crazy people, who, oh, why not? Why not? And I'm not suggesting for a moment that everything should be wet, ready, fire, aim. Because <laughs> that's the typical, you know, sort of downside of an entrepreneur. Oh, let's do it now. Oh, what about research? Ah, oh, don't worry about that. Um, so, you know, do your homework, but hang around people, and you'd be one of them. Uh, they'd say, oh, why not? Give it a shot. And, you know, I mean, I rang you, you know, some weeks ago and said, oh, do you want to do you know, something together, which was a joint venture? And you said, yeah, why not? And they're the people I tell my kids. I don't know whether they're listening to me, but I tell my kids, look, hang around, look for people who go, oh, why not? Yeah, no, I love that. That's a, a great one. I, I'm always the same. It's uh, it's it's always looking for people that have the ability to go. Yeah, cool. Like, how can we make this work? And I know even one of my um my uh, my brother-in-law actually, funnily enough, he um messaged me the other day, and there was a, a post from Mark Boris, and it was a quote from I think James Altucher, where he's like, "Oh, every day try and come up with ten new ideas, um, and to get used to solving problems and creativity in business." And he said, "Why um." Why don't you and I do this every day? We'll come up with 10 each. If we can't, if we get eight, then we have to go in and fill in the other person. So either way, we'll come up with 10 together. So 20 crazy ideas every single day. Um, yeah. And I was sure, let's do it. Let's, let's, let's yeah. have a go. Let's see what we can do. Because, uh, you know, creative thinking and, uh, like you said, hanging around the right people and, and coming up with uh, solutions to problems, I think is is the only way that you can grow, especially in that these day and ages when things are getting tougher and you've got, new uh competition coming in and ai and all this sort of stuff using your own human creativity is the, the only way to go about it well you know what can one just get uh, look we um and my company used to be cool it's called now the institute of wow and uh, dot com but back in the day i had another company in sydney and it was an advertising company it was called the dynamic ideas company okay dynamic ideas company the acronym wasn't all that flash dynamic ideas company uh but anyway um it was all about ideas and uh it was only about oh Two months ago, I got together with Jason and Mitch. Mitch is my Facebook guy. Jason's my pointy head, you know, sort of systems expert behind the scene. Uh, and, you know, I can't spell Infusionsoft, but he just lives with it. Okay. And uh, I said to them, guys, listen, this holiday program, we're giving it to all of these businesses. And the ones that join the dots are smashing it. Obviously, if they put it under the bed with the upswing, they don't smash it. But if they do what we tell them to do, generally these people are walking away with a retirement package. Why don't we just do it ourselves? Because this is how silly we're being. I've been giving this idea, like the Happy Mill toy idea, to all these other businesses, and the ones that do it properly, like the hardware guy down in Melbourne, he's making a fortune. Um, so what we did, I employed a, a, the a Filipino team to uh, research all the top-selling categories from AliExpress and Amazon um, that are between one and three hundred dollars. All right, and everything came drones, and there was uh, massage guns, and there was you know, health and beauty. We got them to go through each of the categories. So home entertainment, so there'd be you know TVs, and there'd be computers, so, and then it'd be health and well-being, and then there would be basically gymnasium equipment, so on and so forth. And what we're about to launch ourselves, I'll let you know whether we get rich out of it. But what we're about to launch ourselves is that where you would buy a massage gun, um, uh, which I didn't even know what they were until this all came about, but it came up number two of the top-selling lines for health and beauty worldwide, like this this particular massage gun, because the research is there for you to look at, 
they sold 2.8 million of this last year for like, you know, $198. So guess what? They're selling a massage gun for $198. We'll sell a massage gun that you get from AliExpress for 20 bucks, by the way, and you sell it for $198. We'll sell it for one ninety eight, but comes with a free global vacation. Shut the gate. I mean, you'd have to think, uh, yeah, we're just experimenting with half a dozen of those products to start with. In other words, we put our own advertising behind it in America because American dollars are good at the moment. Um, you'd have to think, and, and we sit back and think, what were we smoking all of this time? How come we didn't come up with this idea before? <laughs> Uh, well, that's it. You were, you were too busy uh, helping everyone everyone out. In, uh, and but then you're like, okay, cool, now we know it. Isn't it funny, though? The painter lives in the house that's not painted. The car mechanic drives a bomb. Yeah. So we're giving this fantastic holiday idea to all these other people. And I think, well, hang on, why don't we just do it ourselves as well? Yeah. Oh, no, beautiful. I love that. It's, uh, that's great. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to hear how it goes. So, uh, you know, next well, time. Well, you, you do realise that if it works, I won't be talking to you ever again. I, I don't, I wouldn't talk to just normal, regular people. I'd be, I'll have my own island. On your own super yacht. You won't, yeah. The <laughs> <30 times. laughs> and Kim, I know you're wrapping up, but I've got to do one match. This story I'm about to tell, I'll keep it to 60 seconds, is the one that on any podcast I'm on, they get the best reaction to. A company in Gosford, New South Wales, about an hour north of Sydney. And uh, he came on board our coaching program and he sells aluminium fences. And when I say tell this story in America, it's got to be aluminum fences, right? And he said, look, this face page is not working. I said, well, it's called Facebook. It could be why it's not working. It might be on some other platform. And uh, he said, well, it's not working. I, I, I zero in on all the older suburbs that would have falling down painting fences. And he said, no, I, this is not working. This Facebook is just not there. This guy's a ripple. Okay, let me have a look at your ad. And typically he showed the feature, in other words, an aluminium fence. Okay, and the copy about that was that he took over the business from his father who started it in the 1700s. It was boring, boring, boring. I said, mate, you're showing the features, not the benefits. He goes, well, that's what I'm selling. I said, no, no, no. If features sold, then Je Jenny Craig would have a picture in all her Facebook ads of a bowl of rice. She shows the before and after of someone's transformation. So do you want to get out of the way? He goes, yeah. So we ran the following week in you know suburbs that had old houses with falling down piling benches, the ugliest back fence in Australia contest. And you have to take a photo of your falling down painting fence and post it to his Facebook page for the chance to win an aluminium fence makeover, which cost him a grand, right? It was worth buying, but it cost him a grand, right? He had to shut the campaign down after four days and $702 worth of expenditure. He had six months worth of leads. These people not only put their hand up and said, I need a new fence, because this is where they took a photo of the old fence and gave it to him. <laughs> I think once again, he just would ring them up and say, listen, um, you obviously didn't win, but we've got this special deal on that if you actually get and book us by Friday, we'll not only give you the special deal on the aluminium fence, we'll give you a free holiday. Shut the gate. Yeah. yeah. I love that. That's phenomenal. Yeah. It's amazing. Um, I think, JD, I could probably sit here and talk to you all day about marketing and campaign pains and ideas and offers so we'll, we'll, we'll i will wrap this up but for anyone that's listened to this and they you know they liked what they heard and they want to find out more about you or about the you know what these like the incentive-based marketing and holiday offers you guys have where's the best place for them to connect with you online no i don't think that's a good idea mate because i'm going to be really rich after this aliexpress stuff that we're doing <laughs> I, i'll be on my own special island and i probably won't even talk to you let alone any business owners <laughs> if, if only that was the truth uh, mate, uh, yes, so they can have a look at the uh, holiday program at funescapes.com.au. So that's fun as in having fun, funescapes.com.au. And if they wanted to catch up with me in any other capacity, then my consultancy business is uh, theinstituteofwow.com. So it's not just institute, it's theinstituteofwow.com. Amazing. I love that. So guys, uh, if you've liked anything you've heard from JD here today, please go and check it out. And, uh, and get amongst it and, uh, you know, message both of us when you're all on your super yachts from all the money you've made from using <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I said to Gail, I said to Gail, I just want to be so rich that I can be arrogant. That's what I want. I just want to be arrogant. And she, yeah, what she said, she said, you're not rich and you are already arrogant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. I love it. But again, yeah, JD, thank you so much for spending time with us today. We really appreciate it. My pleasure, mate. All the best. Cheers.